All right, my friends, let's jump right into it. Here on the bench is my new Trail Finder 2 from RC Four Wheel Drive. This is the longer wheelbase edition. You can see here that in the body there's an extra door. You may think this truck is familiar and that I've built this before, and I have, but it was the Trail Finder 2 first edition. Now, that was actually done. I modeled that after the BBC series Top Gear uh, when Jeremy Clarkson and the guys were trying to kill a Toyota pickup truck. You guys are familiar with it if you've seen the show. Uh, pretty iconic and so we did a great build series after that. Now I want to choose a different body during this series. In fact I already know what it is but I'm going to keep it a secret for you guys so you can play along and maybe see what you think is going to fit on this wheelbase that's going to be pretty cool for RC Adventures. Now like I said this is a kit. It does not come with any electronics. Uh, there, there is a difference for the viewers that are new to the show. Uh, a kit comes with no electronics and you have to assemble most or all pieces. And then there is an RTR in the uh, RC Hobby which is ready to run. It usually comes with the radio, the ESC and motor and you, you most of the time have to buy the battery unless it's a brand like Traxxas that sometimes includes batteries with their gear. Now I digress. I want to get into the box here and see what we have. Ah, uh, RC four wheel drive. The first thing I notice about this box is it's actually about half the size from the Trail Finder one, or pardon me, the first Trail Finder two that we had actually built. So uh, the box was huge. They had a lot of um, styrofoam and stuff packaging it pretty darn well. Tires and the bead locks. Looks like bumpers. More, aha, here's the body and the chassis rails. Okay, instruction book says what tools we're gonna need, and of course, part one is gonna start off with the chassis rails. You know, I've had a lot of people over the years comment on build videos such as this one, and, and ask me how do I uh, put these together, or if I'm intimidated by doing builds like this, and the answer is yes, every time I'm intimidated. Of course it's gonna be a bit of a challenge, but that's part of the hobby, not everything is easy. But, I have to say, a model like this one looks a heck of a lot easier than a lot of models we've seen before. I'm gonna approach this build the same way as I always would have <laughs> going through the instruction book I'm gonna flip through it first just on my own so I know exactly the direction I'm going in plus I'm also thinking about the theme of my new truck what's it actually gonna look like right trying to look forward uh, in the project to see how I can make out goals and get those goals done while I'm building to make it look like what I want Let's cut open the body here and show you guys what's on the inside. I haven't seen it yet either. Ah, the inside windshield. Man, I love this body. <laughs> it's much larger. Oh, the old Trail Finder didn't have this section on here. But the long wheelbase, that sure is kind of neat looking. Neat. It almost feels like a different type of plastic that they've used now. I'm not sure about that, but it, yeah, this isn't like the yellow stuff. It's a little bit more coarse. Well, there we are. Got to open the chassis rails. This is bag A, where they say we have lots of hardware. And from bag C. So here's where a lot of people would start to get a little nervous, right? You, you get a lot of small parts, everything is in bags, screws everywhere. But really, if, if you just approach it systematically, like here, in part number one, I'm noticing just by the picture uh, that the screws that they want us to use are actually button head screws, right? They're not flat tops. So I'm going to be looking for M36 millimeters and these inside uh, shackles, basically. The shackles are down here for the next step. So one set gets installed with the six mils and then the second set set gets installed again with button head uh, screws here uh, at eight mils for the shackles on the inside. So what I do is I just basically lay it out so I know what every part I need is where. These two are going to come together to make a single shackle and here are the M8 screws that I need, button heads. Again with these ones this is the first step with the uh, six mils and their button heads. So everything is laid out exactly how it should be in the book. There we go. Both sets uh, of shackles are put onto the frame rails. 
And the frame rails feel nice and sturdy. Everything about them, the countersunk uh, areas, they fit really well so far. Okay, next is the side mounting body posts. Here is the rear sliders right here. All right, and then the little shackles go on. There we go. When I'm done, they still move freely. Getting out the uh, middle uh, transfer case mount. This is gonna be, I've gotta be careful of the direction of this to make sure to follow the holes on the right side. So what I like about uh, most of these RC four wheel drive builds is that everything is countersunk and tapped. So you don't have, like there is a ton of uh, uh, lock nuts that we have to use, but comparatively not half as many, you know, just being able to thread it right into the all aluminum part. That's pretty handy. Okay, first servo brace right here. It's gonna slide into the countersunk holes. Some more chassis brace. These are just two tubes. Okay, I'm gonna flip up the uh, chassis. We can see a countersunk area here and here. Using uh, the instruction book to show the direction of this, I'm gonna drop uh, this center chassis brace right into there. Now I moved ahead a little bit just so I could get some things done. Here I've got the, the front uh, dampener hangers, the shock hangers are in place. All of the center chassis braces are installed. You'll notice as I was saying the holes, these are actually uh, threaded screw holes. So they're pointed up the way they should be. All the chassis brace and rails are nice and rigid. I love, I check it out. I love the very small tolerances on these machined parts because they fit perfectly together. Uh, and I didn't have one of the button head screws round out on me yet. So two thumbs up on that. On to the next part. The small steel plate is the Trail Finder 2 upper deck. Uh, basically, we have to set up some mounts. So I'll just do this off camera. It's pretty easy to do. And the steel plate will basically line up right on the frame rails. Aha, so now mounting up into these uh, round tube chassis braces are gonna be the fuel cell slash uh, electronic receiver box. This is where all the electronics will be running to. Okay, body posts for the back. Just slide it through from the bottom. Piece of cake. With these plastic pieces, I always prefer to uh, hand crank them uh, just so I don't strip out the threading inside the plastic itself. And I put in the back bumper mount. Here is the transfer case I had mentioned earlier. Let's take a moment to really appreciate how far uh, the scale hobby has come over such a short amount of time uh, over the last few years. Uh, here we are looking at a, at a scale transfer case that helps distribute power to the truck. That is pretty neat. There we are. Remember, these things should fit together fairly easy. You never really want to force things into place, especially if it's a screw that's not threading properly. Always make sure to uh, back off the set screw or the flathead or the button head, whatever you're using. Uh, make sure that you got it seated properly or else it can cause you problems in the future. Here is the beautiful two-stage transmission as well as where you're gonna be mounting your motor. Of course, the motor of choice, whatever you guys decide if you're building the kit. One thing I like about the RC four-wheel drive transmission and I always have is the fact that they use 32 pitch teeth and pinion. Uh, really, really very strong and I've always been very happy with that. The inside gears have always been good and I've never really had a problem with anything busting on the inside. But that's just me. Everybody else has uh, different experiences of course but for me I've had a few of these trucks and they're pretty darn good. The offset on the hanger making it very easy to get to the screws to put them into place. For those wondering this will be the shifting arm that's attached to the servo that actually helps this transmission shift gears back and forth. And then the hanger on the other side is going to take 8 mil flathead so it's different than the other side. Make sure your eyes are open if you're following the instruction book. Then it's time to cut into the axle uh, bags. This is the front axle. I can tell that because it already has the uh, axle uh, or the steering horns installed. You can see there. 
I, that's another thing I like about this. The the kits, this is all aluminum, guys. Uh, there are other kits out there that are plastic and you have to assemble the axles themselves and this can be a lengthy process. So for those that are intimidated by doing kits, you know, this one here actually comes mostly assembled. It's just a matter of putting the frame and the suspension together and, and really figuring out the uh, type of electronics that you want. But check this out, it's already done. The different one in the back, you can see it's just a straight axle, doesn't have any steering components at all, so it's very easy to identify. So I'm going to need four 16 millimeter M3s, including the uh, lock nuts themselves, the two springs, smaller one on the bottom. I'm going to just slide these longer screws through, and then right where I just ended up taking out those smaller screws, these will actually slide through as well. I've got the leaf, uh, both leafs that I want are in place. I've taken an M16 or an M3 16 millimeter screw and put it through to an M3 lock nut. Now the neat thing about these uh, trail finders or, or the axle tubes that they use for the housing here of the axle uh, is that they're countersunk. So what that means is you can take your M3 uh, lock washer or lock nut, pardon me, put it into place with your finger, just kind of give it a small turn and everything tightens up right on its own. I also built the uh, back axle with the leaf springs. Now, something came to mind while I was building this, and I may want to say this right now. A lot of us are running trailers and carrying like little RC quads or, you know, another car or something. If you want, and you are, of course, carrying a trailer, this is the time where you'd want to put in those smaller leaf springs here uh, in the back. But be forewarned, if you do that and you're not running with a trailer, then the rear end is going to be a lot stiffer than it would be if you left those springs out. So really up to you. Uh, if you carry a trailer, that might be something you want to investigate. Just tighten up these screws. All right, with both axles in place and we're moving on to the dampeners. Okay, so the shorter dampeners on the front, the 18 millimeter screw with a two millimeter spacer. I'm gonna start threading it into the upper hole on the axle housing. Ah, turns out on the back uh, axle, you don't need a lock washer at all, or a lock nut at all. It actually just goes right into the threaded axle housing. Two mil spacer again. Gonna run these on the inside because they actually hook up on an angle. With both of the dampeners in place, you'll actually see how the suspension flex works. Now, being brand new, it is still fairly stiff. I'm glad I left out that extra leaf in the suspension, but I know I'll be suffering later when I've got a saggy rear end. <laughs> no one likes a saggy rear end, eh? So this really, for those that are new to scale trucking, you know, and, and, and scale trail crawling, the whole point of a scale truck is to mimic what it's like in full size. So this kind of suspension articulation is very common, especially if you want leaf sprung suspension with dampeners. Looks like I need the three mil spacer that comes in another labeled bag. I love that they've actually sent extra spacers uh, and extra hardware. It's almost like RC four wheel drive really does uh, put a lot of thought into the whole packaging. How many of us drop things on the floor while we're building and then we can't find them after. <laughs> I'm always glad to have the extra parts left over as well. You know, there's nothing wrong with having some extra hardware when you're out on the trail anyway. <laughs> Fun. For those that may be wondering about the magnetic pit mat I'm using, I got it from calrc.com. So next, I'm taking the whole transmission and motor mount. Uh, I'm lining up this hole that comes out of the transmission up to this hole. Now, you'll notice if I'm turning this, this actually spins free. There's nothing that's binding or jamming it up. Securing the transmission to the chassis. 
Next is the drive shafts. And this, if anything, I could say is the one place I'm a little bit disappointed. Everything else comes in aluminum or steel, and these ones, apart from the universal joints on the end, they're actually plastic. Now, there's good things and bad things. The reason you could have plastic drive shafts, of course, is if it's under a lot of torque, uh, then it's the drive shaft that breaks and not the transmission. So, thumbs up on that. I do understand that point. On the other hand, with everything else being mostly aluminum except for these slider rails and a few of the chassis uh, support braces right here. Uh, you know, I, I would expect these ones to be a little beefier, but RC four wheel drive does sell steel drive shafts as, as an upgrade for those guys that are a little bit more serious out there putting a lot of miles on the trail truck and you know doing some sort of competition. There are upgrades available. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and install the plastic ones here. Okay, next up, steering links. I've had some messages come in over the years about how to set up rod ends properly uh, with these screws. Like they can be a bit of a challenge and a lot of people try to thread it in the tube and then they try to put the rod end on. But that is very difficult because you're not getting a good uh, connection. In fact, it can just thread right into the tube overall. So what I do is I, I put it on the end of my uh, hex driver right there. And I'll find a smaller uh, screwdriver, stick it through the eyelet, and then just turn that set screw in, and then it's nice and tight and straight. And then when I thread it into the end of the tube, there's no problem in making it tight and secure. Okay, servo links are done. I'm gonna be using a Savox waterproof servo fits in there perfectly. So I'll actually end up putting the hardware on the servo itself, including the rubber grommets that go in there and the screw sleeves. Okay, just installing the uh, first and second steering throw arm, making sure to put the smaller throw arm through the leaf spring suspension. Then as it starts to come through to the other side, make sure, of course, to grab an M3 lock washer, or pardon me, a lock nut. Shifting servo I put in is also a Savox, but you'll notice it's a different color. I really want the torque and speed up front, but for my shifting servo, I, though I do want it waterproof, it doesn't need to be super fast. It just has to have the torque to be able to move this shifting arm uh, back and forth when the transmission is under load. I'll easily just slide the front bumper into place. This is a plastic bumper. I do have the upgraded aluminum one from an old build I had a long time ago. So I think because it's a single piece of CNC, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install this, but not until I line up the body to see if it fits right. All right, there we go, my friends. I just slid the bumpers into place. They're not permanently in there at all. I did do the wheels and tires off camera. It's very, very easy to do. You just undo the lugs, you clamp the tire together, and of course you put it on the truck. But there you go, as a roller with some servos installed, look how long this vehicle actually is. Uh, I think it's very cool how they extended the drive shaft with that center drive shaft hanger right here uh, with the separate bearing. I did swap out to one of the steel drive shafts that I have here uh, at the studio, of course, and I'll choose my motor and ESC combo coming up. But there you go, a complete smooth roller. Uh, and I figured to end off the video, even though this body isn't together, it is a two piece. Might as well give you an idea of what it would look like. Dun, 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 dun. Get it lined up. Now, if I had it screwed together, it would be nice and straight, but what do you think? That's a pretty darn great start on a long wheelbase trail finder. I'm looking forward to seeing out what kind of capability it does have. It's simply beautiful. So I am going to paint up this body. Not sure when I'm going to do it, uh, but you guys are going to have to stay tuned for the next episode when I'm doing this because I'm going to unveil the body that I have chosen to go on this even though this gray one is so super sick uh, also coming up on the show we've got more build uh, of the uh, Vecta 5 from Kraken uh, and got other things in the works too so make sure to hit the notification button which is beside the uh, subscribe button become part of the notification squad uh, and then that way you guys won't miss any of the uh, upcoming build videos or tips and tricks that have been uh, working on for you guys so you can have something cool and fun in the winter 
months uh, while we're all surrounded in snow. So hopefully you've been wrenching along. It doesn't matter on what RC, uh, but you've been working along with me and hopefully you've enjoyed today's build video. My friends, thank you for tuning in. We will see you in the next episode of RC Adventures. Now get outside and have some fun with RC. Bye.